Okay, you guys. Okay, I am back. I had to take a minute because services was so good. I had stopped what I was doing in order to attend two separate services. And yeah, it was really good. And then I was bubbling over from that. So I had to like kind of wind down a little bit. So if I seem tired now, <laughs> you know how when your adrenaline is like really high and you're going and then after it, it just goes and you, you just like get tired. So if I seem tired now. That's what's going on because today has been amazing amazing and just what i expected to happen happened i stopped and paused in the videos that i was doing to go into services but i was expecting to hear a confirmation um for what god was already pouring into me and i went to two separate services and in both services i get that confirmation this side and on this side shoring me up for <laughs> for yes yeah it was good it was good um my facebook page is jody l sereno barbara macarios m-a-k-a-r-i-o-s macarios is not a name it's not a last name it is a title it means blessed one um it's greek it's a greek word that means blessed one so um my name jody l initial l sereno barber um and then macarius is my facebook page it's open to the public you can search me you can search me and you will see all of my videos and um yeah do that and you get the chance to also see the links to today's service uh today being january sunday january the 24th 2021 both services that i attended it was really good so let's get started with that being said Let's get started. I left off the other video um, stating that, or actually we were looking at 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we were going to just like take it bit by bit, and we did verse number 1, and then, um, and like literally broke it down, and we had talked about the scoffers, and how um, terrible the last days would be, or these latter times would be, and we mentioned, we started off by mentioning that the Holy Spirit is speaking, and of course it's important that we listen when the Holy Spirit speaks several times uh jesus said he who has ears let him hear you know let him hear what the spirit is speaking to the congregation so um yeah <laughs> uh well let me let me tell you what that was about what that just happened was about the first service that i attended pastor who spoke the pastor who spoke spoke from revelation chapter 2 where Jesus had John write letters to seven different congregations. And in those letters, each one ended with, let him who have ears hear what the Spirit is speaking to the congregation. So the fact that this morning I was up and up before the Lord and the Spirit began to speak and then to experience that. Yeah, and that was just only one of the confirmations that I received. So, um, but I want to try to stay focused. I want to try to stay focused because those um, videos are already done and I already shared on my Facebook page. <laughs> I'm still, look, I was tired a few minutes ago and I'm bubbling over again or beginning to. So, um, reading in first Timothy chapter four, let me do it again. The spirit says the spirit clearly says that in latter times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. And then I went to break that down. Um, the reason that some were abandoning the faith was because of of the persecution, the trial that they were under, the pressure that they were under in um, what it was it says in latter times. The Spirit clearly says that in latter times and the references for that took me to 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 as well as 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 3. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1, Paul went on to speak of how terrible these latter times will be, which is the times that we're living in, how bad it will be. And Peter, he spoke of it in his second letter. And what he said was that in these days, there will be scoffers. And then he went on to tell us how they would um, the scoffers will come scoffing like like they're not just scoffers, but they are actually scoffing and that um, 
they follow their own evil desires. So it was important to me to know what scoffers were. And a scoffer, I ended up, of course, uh, I was already prepared. So I ended up doing a definition, having it ready. And the definition of a scoffer is this. is someone who laughs and speaks about a person or idea in a way that shows that they think that the person or the idea is stupid or silly. Now, here's the deal. Uh, past couple of years, or the past four years, the scoffers have been here. <laughs> the scoffers have been here, and they have definitely been scoffing. And the person that has been on the receiving end of that um, was the previous president. So, with that being said, um, are you that scoffer? Are you one who scoffed? Are you one? Who laughed and spoke about the past president in a way that showed that you thought that he was stupid or silly. I mean, even if you say it now, then you are being defined as a scoffer. And Second Peter chapter 3 verse 3 says, In the last days, which is the time we're living in, scoffers will come scoffing and following their own evil desires so we have definitely seen that this year um so after doing that research about these latter days and defining it it says it continues to say some will abandon the faith some will abandon the faith there's so much that is going on that some will abandon their faith and I looked at that and they will follow, it says, some would abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Oh my gosh, have that not been, been seen? These, um, I just realized I got a phone call to make, but oh my gosh, has that, nah, I'm not going to make no phone call. I'm not going to do it. Mm -mm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, it's, it's just this information, you guys, this information about everything and how it is coming to pass today. But I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm not going to make no phone calls. Um, so it says that some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. As I was reading over that, as I was reading over that, I began to remember or hear the Holy Spirit speak to me to remember the conversation between Jesus and Peter. Here's why. I'm going to read this again. The Spirit clearly says, and this is uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number, what, what, 1, <laughs> verse number 1. The Spirit clearly says that in latter times some will abandon the faith and following deceiving spirits and things taught by demons and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons okay so what caught my attention was not so much what they would do not so much the following of deceiving spirits and things taught by demons, but the fact that they will abandon the faith. I kind of stopped right there for a second. The, the spirit clearly says, and now this is a spirit of truth who will lead us in all truth. And according to John chapter 16, verse 13, in reference to the spirit, it says, and he will tell you what is yet to come. I'm going to read this again. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. The spirit, the spirit of truth, who's going to tell us what is yet to come, clearly says that in latter times, our times that we're living in now, some will abandon the faith. I stopped right there. I stopped right there because the first thing I thought was, yeah, not me. I'm not going to abandon the faith. That was the first thing I thought, not me. I'm not. I'm sticking close. I'm clinging to God's word with everything I have. 
And I heard the Spirit say to me, even as I was reading over everything, remember the conversation between Peter and Jesus. And I was like, oh, see, here's the deal. Um, I'm working on some videos now. I'm almost done with uploading them in what I call a great takeover. And this is a part of the great takeover, too, where... I learned that um, on Thursday, which was the day after they did the inauguration of the new leaders of this country, um, the United States of America, um, I knew that God said that we were supposed to pray for, for our leaders. That's 2 Timothy chapter... two. Is it 2 Timothy or 1 Timothy? It's 1 Timothy. First Timothy, not second Timothy. It's first Timothy chapter two, verses one through four. It says, I urge you, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of truth. I knew that we were supposed to pray for the leaders. I also knew that, um, or in the process of preparing to, it has been drilled to me so that I know that um, we're supposed to ask the Holy Spirit to help us. As Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27, we're to ask him to help us with our weakness because we don't know how to pray as we ought. I'm going to put a pen right there, and I'm about to tell you why. Uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, because this was the first thing in my other video short, but I have to do this now. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, God tells us to trust in the Lord with all our heart and to lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways to acknowledge him, and he will make our path straight. The problem is that we read the scripture we could quote the scripture we know the scripture but we don't do the scripture so we it, there are times when we come before god in prayer i get my charge i should charge my phone <laughs> there are times when we come before god in prayer and we are in our own understanding Instead of seeking God, instead of asking God, uh, what should we do? How should we uh, proceed in a matter? We come before God and we're like, well, God, I need this and I need that. And I need you to give me favor in this and I need you to do that. We, we, come, we approach God as if he's supposed to do what we say. And we forget that we are his servants. So he's not supposed to do what we say. We're supposed to align ourselves with him and what he says. And so because of that, we don't know how to pray as we ought to. But the Holy Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because he the spirit intercedes for us in accordance with god's will see we come before god praying god a print praying our stuff what we want you know and we'll even ask a person you know i need you to pray for me that this that and the other happens and then some of us will go down and we'll pray and we'll say all these great words and 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 lord in the name of jesus let this blah 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 blah, blah as if we are rubbing a bottle with a genie in it who's supposed to pop out and do what we say that ain't this, that ain't this, y'all. That ain't this, and we need to stop it. We need to stop it. We need to stop it. We need to stop. But we don't know. Like, lack of knowledge, right? My people die for lack of knowledge. That's what God said. So, um, now that it has been oppressed upon me that I need to ask the Holy Spirit for what to pray, for how to pray in any matter any matter at all and because of that going back to uh first timothy knowing that it says in latter times some will abandon the faith 
And my first thought was, oh, we, yeah, uh-uh, I'm sticking close to Jesus. I'm not going to abandon the faith. And no sooner than I said that, I heard the Holy Spirit speaking in my ear. Remember the conversation between Jesus and Peter? And I'm like, so let me uh, start taking y'all to that conversation. Because, man, you the Holy Spirit is speaking and he is preparing us ahead of time. He helps us. To pray, to know what to pray. He helps us. He helps us to align ourselves with God's will. Remember, it's not God's desire that any of us, any of us lose our lives. His desire is that we all attain to repentance. So I ended up going back. I started with Matthew. The story is in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. <laughs> oh, Matthew. The tax collector, Mark, the fisherman, Luke, the doctor, and John, who was the youngest of the group and the loved one, they all told on Peter. Hey, last one of them. They, they, yeah, they, they had a field day with Peter. But the first one, if you can, write it down. If you can't, don't worry about it because this is a video. And by the time you see it, all you got to do is pause it. Or you could just play it again and get it again. So, yeah, you don't have to write it down right now if you don't want to. Because, again, this is a video. Um, so, the first one is Matthew chapter 26. I'm going to show y'all. Now, y'all remember what happened with the conversation between Peter and, and uh, Jesus. What conversation do you ask? Well, let me tell you what conversation. So, if you remember when Jesus had said to Peter that this time was coming. I'm paraphrasing. That the time was coming that he was going to deny him or betray him. One, when he said either deny or betray, I don't remember exactly. I'm paraphrasing right now. I'm not looking at it. So <laughs> he said, Peter was like, uh, not me, Lord. I, I am not going to leave you. And Jesus was like, um, I tell you the truth. Before the cock crows three times, you will have denied me or something to that effect. So I go to look it up. This is Matthew chapter 26, because I was told to remember. So it says, starting at verse number 31, it's verses 31 through 56. I might not read all of those verses. Um, I might not read all of those verses, but starting at verse 31, it says, Then Jesus told them, this very night you will all... All. So if you looking looking at this video and you saying... I'm not going to fall away. I'm not going to look. I was just saying that myself. Y'all see me. Y'all know how much I love the Lord. You know how excited I be about telling, talking about God's word. And yet, Peter was so much so too. Peter was like right there when Jesus, whenever Jesus went to go do something special, he took three people with him and it's all, and Peter was one of them. Jesus said to Peter, um, uh, your name shall be Cephas or he's no, he said to Cephas cause Peter's name was Cephas, but we're so used to calling him Peter because Jesus said to Cephas, your name shall be Peter. And on this rock, um, I will build my church. He went on after he was resurrected, after he had died and was resurrected. He then said to Peter, he said, feed my lambs. And then he turned around and said, shepherd my sheep, feed my sheep. So Peter was a forefront. He was full. He, look, he was full and overflowing. You think I'm overflowing. He was full and overflowing. And yet he denied Jesus three times or betrayed Jesus, denied Jesus. He denied, look, denial, betrayal to me is all the same thing. I had to go look and see if there's a difference. And if you know of a difference, comment in the com in the, in the, in the uh, comments and let's talk about it. Help me, you know, so I know to be able to explain the difference between that. I'm going to have to go and look it up later. I am definitely going to have to go look it up later though. I'm saying. So, so he says, Jesus tells them, all, all of them, he says to them, this very night, you will all, he didn't say three of you. He didn't say nine of you. He said, you will all, A-R-R, you will all fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you in Galilee. Peter replied, Peter, he replied, 
Even if all fall, see Peter for real for real wanted to say them, even if they fail. He said, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will, Peter. Peter, he said all, knowing he wanted to say them, even if they fail, but he chose his words, right? So he said, even if all fall on account of you, I will never. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. This very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I would never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Uh, we know how that worked out. We know the story, right? So I look over here and... It's called the betrayal, the betrayal that stood at, uh, again, my Bible has like subtopics or however. And so the subtopic for that, and remember I said, I was going to read all 56 or all verses 31 through 56. I was going to read all 25 verses, but, um, that little part there, what stood out to me was because as I was reading in first Timothy chapter four, verse one, um, and it talked about some abandoning the faith in my heart. I said, I'm not going to abandon you, Lord Jesus. I'm not going to abandon you. I need you. I'm not going to abandon you. And the Holy Spirit said to me, remember the conversation between Peter and Jesus? And I was like, oh. and I had to go look at it. So that's called, that conversation was called the betrayal. Abandoning the faith. That's a betrayal abandoning the faith that's a betrayal so that was matthew now i knew that each one of the disciples reported on this very event so i go to mark next because i'm not i'm feeling some type of way now because i realized that peter said the same thing and he ended up falling away so i go to to um I go to Mark, it's chapter 6, chapter 14, verses 26 through 31. 26 through 31. So, for that part that I read, for that little part that I read, not the actual betrayal, but for that little part. So, when I go there, um, it says, when they had sung a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives, um, you will fall, you will all fall away. Jesus told them for it is written. I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I went ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, even if all fall away, I will not. Jesus said, I tell you the truth today. Yes. Tonight before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. Um, but Peter insisted emphatically, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. Those verses, remember I told you that my Bible has subtopics. So the subtopic for those verses is called walk to Gethsemane. The walk to the Garden of Gethsemane. So, the net, and that stood out to me. That stands out to me now. Because um, earlier I told you I had paused in all of my uh, vid the videos I was recording and my sharing with you of what God had deposited in me so that I could go to services. And I told you already how the first service um, taught by Pastor uh, Thomas Long, I didn't tell you his name, but I'm telling you his name now, the first service, how that really blessed me and it confirmed because I went to services expecting a confirmation for all that excuse me, God was pouring into me now. So the first service, I received my confirmation. So in the second service, I received my confirmation too, because in the second service, um, Bishop Kenneth Smith, who taught the second service, um, and he's from California, who taught the second service, he taught about the places where we experience God, the places. And, um, I am looking at that now because we went from the betrayal, which again was the falling away because Jesus said, Jesus said that what God's word says, 
uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, that the Spirit clearly says that in latter times, many will, where is I, where did I, where did I write it? Abandon the faith. Some will abandon the faith. It says some. You know, I need to go back and look at that to see what it said. Did it say many or did it say some? Praise God. It says some. Some is not all. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Y'all just don't know how good. Y'all just don't know because that kind of like really. I was feeling some wet type of way. I was feeling sad. I was feeling sad on the inside because on the inside, I don't want to abandon Jesus. I don't. But that's why the spirit who comes, the spirit of truth who comes to us, he comes to us and he tells us beforehand. He gives us a time to prepare. Oh my gosh. And that takes me back to, again, first service. <laughs> The first service taught by Pastor Long, where he was um, giving us the, well, I can't say in, in, in business, in the world, they, they call it the SWOT analysis, S-W-O-T, which is strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat. But the truth, Jesus himself gave us an analysis, which was not called SWOT. It is uh, S-W-C-P. It is strength, weaknesses, counsel, which is our opportunity to get ourselves right. And I, I, like after we find out what our weaknesses is, it's the counsel so that we can align ourselves back up with God. And P is the promises of God so that we can receive the promises of God. Um, so with that being said, <laughs> with that being said, it says, the Spirit clearly says that in latter times, some, I'm going to emphasize that some, not all, some, praise God, will abandon the faith. Now, that part is sad. Some, not all, praise God, but some will abandon the faith. And um, so I'm looking again at Peter and uh, look, we looked at the betrayal, how Jesus warned them. He warned them ahead of time that this was going to happen. Um, and then on that walk to Gethsemane, the walk to Gethsemane, uh, they had this conversation. So I'm paying attention again at this conversation and the fact that they was walking to Gethsemane when they had it. Um, the next thing, I go now to Luke, to look at Luke's account of this incident. So Luke's account of this incident is found at uh, Luke chapter 22, verses 39 through 46. I'm there. And the accounts actually happen in verses 31. Well, let me start at verse 31. Let me share this real quick. Luke chapter 22, verse 31. It says, and I probably should read, read prior to that, but Jesus here is speaking. It says, Simon, Simon, which was Peter, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. But I prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you would deny three times that you know me. Then Jesus asked them, when I sent you without purse or bags or sandals, did you lack anything? And they all replied, nothing. He said to them, but now if you have a purse, take it, also a bag. And if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. Okay, so now like these verses here, let me tell you how people misapply it. They misapply these verses to, to make it seem like having a gun today, today, having a gun is okay. Um, I just said it was misapplied. I'm going to leave it at that for right now. Because I know that the Holy Spirit is going to reveal even more on that. But I'm not here for those verse, those parts of the verses right now. 
I'm here for what comes next. Remember, I said earlier that the Holy Spirit will help us because we don't know how to pray as we ought to. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be praying. Um, but the Holy Spirit will help us. So all of this was the Holy Spirit helping me and showing me and preparing me ahead of time for what to pray for. See, I don't know what tomorrow may bring. I don't know. But the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth and who will speak to me what he has heard, is, is was leading this whole thing, this whole study. Again, this is the great takeover where God has taken over 2020 and the Holy Spirit is speaking and I am trying my best and doing my utmost to hear. So I get to the reason I'm at Luke chapter 22 now is because I was looking at all of these instances where it was reported on of Peter, this conversation between Peter and Jesus, where Peter had said to Jesus, I'm not going to leave you. I would die with you, you know, because Jesus had told Peter, he was like, you know, you about to betray me three times. I'm paraphrasing again, y'all. So we looked at it in Matthew, Matthew chapter 26, and it was called a betrayal. In um, Mark chapter 14, it was called the walk to the uh, walk to the Garden of Gethsemane. So this was happening as they were walking to Gethsemane, this conversation. And so now in the Garden of Gethsemane, this this part here, this part here, y'all pay attention. It says Jesus went on. No, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him on reaching the place. He said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed. Now, remember when I said to you that, that, uh, Peter, his, his faith was so strong. Like you think I'm bubbling over his faith was so strong that whenever Jesus went to go do something of importance or something really special, he, there was always three that he took with him. Peter was one of those three. So it says, Jesus went out. I'm starting again. This is verse 39 of Luke chapter 22. It's entitled the garden of Gethsemane. It says, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray. He's talking to them now. He says, pray that you do not fall into temptation. Number one, Jesus is telling us what to do. Are you a disciple of Christ? And watching this, if you are, Jesus is telling us right now to pray. Pray that we do not fall into temptation. It says he withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them knelt down and prayed. So not only did he tell them to pray, but he withdrew. He pulled away from them, went a little bit further out. It says about a stone's throw and he knelt down and prayed. Now this is what he prayed. He said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. He's telling us, Jesus, not only did Jesus tell us to pray, he's talking to us today. Because remember when I read in 1 Timothy chapter 4, uh, verse 1, about what this last days would be like, about the scoffers and about the, the, the heaviness of the persecution. Like we saw that with, I'm about to say his name. No, I'm not going to say his name. We saw that with what was done with the last president over the past four years we saw that heavy weight that burden I, like i don't know anybody that could have stood up under that we saw that happen some might have even participated in it i'm about to repent now if i might have said anything or laughed at any look even if i saw a post whether i wrote it or not if i laughed at it that's in agreement Okay, I, I have to be honest about that. That's an agreement. So I need to repent also for even sitting in the seats with, with scoffers. That's uh, Psalm, oh, we, the Holy Spirit. 
Oh, we the Holy Spirit. I'm going a little slow because I'm trying to hold this camera because it is um, on a charger and I don't have anything in here to prop it up right now. But Psalm chapter one, I need to show y'all this. I found, I got it without losing my spot. It says, Psalm chapter one, verse one. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Number one. I'm going to read that again. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or, meaning there's a second thing, stand in the way of sinners or, here's a third thing, sit in the seat of mockers. That would be the same as the scoffers. So, so whether I wrote the post and I'm saying myself now, y'all, but it applies to all of us. Whether I wrote the post or not, if I giggled at it, if I laughed at it, if I thought it was funny, then I am agreeing with the person that wrote it. Just like Paul didn't throw the stone. I mean, Saul, who became the apostle Paul, when it came to killing Stephen, he wasn't the one that threw the stone. But he was holding the coats, watching the coats of the ones who threw the stone. And so because he was watching the coats of the ones who threw the stone, he in effect sat it with them. So he did it too. So for that reason, I had to make sure I go and repent. Thank you, Lord, for showing me that. I, I had to make sure I go and repent. Um, so Jesus said, pray that you do not fall into temptation. That was the first thing that he told us. Remember, the Holy Spirit will give us warnings. So this is the first warning for our day now pray that we do not fall into temptation the next thing is jesus actually prayed and so we know what to pray so it says this is verse 42 of luke chapter 22 it says father if you are willing take this cup from me yet not my will but yours be done we need to pray that god's will be done not our will we need to pray that we do not fall into temptation we need to ask the father if he is willing if he is willing because if you got a chance to read those first uh messages that i've been sharing under the great takeover which came from isaiah one of the things we learned in isaiah chapter 40 verse number not 40 isaiah chapter 30 Verse number 20 is that God would give us the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. Um, you got to go check that video out. I'm not going to go into that right now, but you got to go check the video out. It's already done. And if you're seeing this one, you know, you'll be able to go grab the other ones too. That one was amazing. So um, we need to pray to the Lord that if he's willing to take this cup from us, yet not our will but he as he wills um and that's what an understanding that when god says that all things work together for the good of those who love the lord and who are called according to his purpose not according to our purpose but according to his purpose we know that sometimes god will allow some things to happen again that's the first videos y'all under the great takeover there are some things that god will allow to happen not to hurt us but to train us one of the things that i did share in those other videos that i will share now is that i come to realize that that bread of adversity was really a gift from god it was a gift from God because that adversity, that trouble would cause us all to move into a position where we humble ourselves before the Lord and pray to the Lord. And it is at that point when we humble ourselves and pray that we receive of God's favor. It says he will, he will hear from heavens. He will answer, forgive us of our sins and he will heal our lands. He will hear from heaven, forgive us of our sins and heal our land. So, um... It says, Jesus prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. It says, verse 30, 43, an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. His sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose, it says he was in anguish. He was in anguish out. And he prayed even more earnestly and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. It says when he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep 
exhausted from sorrow. He asked them, why are you sleeping? And he said to them, get up and pray that you will not fall into temptation. He's telling us now, like, like, why are we sleeping? Why are we not paying attention? Why are we not praying? There's something when you know something is getting ready to happen. Like, for instance, say, um, say somebody's going to go into surgery and uh, this is a really serious surgery. The first thing you do is get on that phone call, get on your social media accounts, and you be like, I need you to pray for me. This, that, and the other is happening. I need you to call all the prayer warriors, and you be wanting them prayer warriors to be on that phone 20, or, or in that prayer 24-7 until it is over. You want them to walk you through, just like them doctors and them nurses who be on them shifts at work. And, and and some of them doctors be working two and three shifts because of the shortage in um that field of people who are ready to and able to, for that matter, especially doing all this COVID stuff, stand in the gap. You know, they're they're working hours that oh my gosh, oh my gosh, we need to lift them up in prayer. And so that's what we be wanting when we know something is getting ready to happen and, and, and the intensity of it and not knowing the outcome. You want people to be on that wall and be in prayer and you want the prayer to not stop. So you you calling on people. I need you to pray and I need you to pray and I need you to pray. And come on. And you, you want it to keep going. And, and then people be talking about the fasting of prayer and we're going to fast and you're going to take this hour and you're going to take that hour and you're going to take that because you want that prayer to be 24 seven. Jesus said to them, get up, get up. He said, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. He said, so that you will not fall into temptation. Jesus already prayed. He already prayed. He already prayed. He got down on his knees after he told them, pray that you would not fall into temptation. He went a stone's throw from them, got on his knees and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not as I will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him to strengthen him and being that he was in anguish and being in anguish, even with an angel coming from heaven, appearing to him and strengthening him, he was still in anguish. And he, it says, pray more earnestly. And his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Once he rose from prayer, he went back to his disciples and he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. And he asked them, why are you sleeping? <laughs> he done already got his for what he had to go through. He asked his disciples, why are you sleeping? They had no idea what was coming. None, because if they know, ooh, and ooh, <laughs> ooh, and that's what Jesus said. That's, let me put a marker right here so I can turn back to that. That's what Jesus was saying in Matthew chapter 24. He said, this is verse number, what is it? Because he said, if they would have known what time it was. Um, okay, here it is. I found it. It's Matthew chapter 24, verse 42. He said, therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready because the son of man will come. At an hour when you do not expect him, the son of man will come. At an hour when you do not expect him. For those who are not keeping on the watch. But for those who are keeping on the watch, let me tell you what they were doing. They were praying to God to 
not be allowed to fall into temptation. Those who were keeping on the watch were praying to God. To, and that is what the Holy Spirit is telling us to do right now. Here we are. This is the meat of it right now. This is it. This is it in a nutshell. The Holy Spirit is telling us to pray that we do not fall into temptation. Jesus told us what to pray. He said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. It is important that we pray now and not be sleeping because if we're sleeping, we are going to be caught off guard, which is what, which is what um, Jesus said would happen. Again, that's Matthew chapter 24, verse 43, but understand this. Well, verse 42 and uh, through 44. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would have not let his house be broken into. So you must also be ready because the Son of Man will come in an hour when you do not expect him. He is warning us. He is warning us. He is warning us. He's warning us to pray. To pray. That we do not fall into temptation. That caused me. To look at a couple of scriptures, one of whom is Matthew chapter 6, verse 13. Jesus warned us to pray that we do not fall into temptation. Um, Matthew chapter 6, verse 13 says, This is this is a prayer that Jesus taught. It says, This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us from the evil one. James chapter 1 verse 13 was another scripture that I prayed. I mean that I looked at in reference to the prayer that we are to pray to not fall into temptation. James chapter 1 verse 13 says, When tempted, no one should say God is tempting me. Let me see something real quick. Okay. Um, it says, when tempted, no one should say God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when by his own, when by his own evil desire, he is dragged away and enticed. I'm going to read that again. Actually, we go to 15. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil. Nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when by his own evil desire, he is dragged away and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. One of the things we read about the scoffers is that the scoffers, it said, um, this was 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3. In the last days, the scoffers will come scoffing and following their own evil desires. Um so you see that evil desire again, it says that each of us were tempted when by our own evil desire, 
we are dragged away and enticed. I looked at that, the fact that it talked about the tempting, I kind of sat with that for a second. So I looked down in the comments, the commentary at the um, located on my Bible, and this is what it said, tempted. It says, to tempt, and let me tell you this real quick. The reason why I looked at it, because where it says, when tempted, no one should say God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. And so... I went down to the commentary and this is what it says. It says to tempt is to test, try, prove, or solicit to evil. And so I kind of sat with that and I thought I pondered it for a minute. And I'm like, okay, God, you, uh, I need help understanding this. Because with Abraham, you had Abraham take Isaac up in this area, secluded area, up this mountain in this secluded area. And you had him build an offer, a altar to offer up Isaac. And Abraham did that. He built the altar and he bound Isaac and had Isaac on the altar. And he went to raise his sword to kill his son, but you stopped him. But you had him do that because you were testing his faith. So I'm like, I need to understand this. So I'm going to read this again. It says, To tempt, tempt it. To tempt is to test, try, prove, or solicit to evil. In verse 2 and 12, the same Greek word is used to mean those trials that are designed to prove the quality of one's character. In this verse, which was verse 13, the word means a solicitation to evil. And this, James says, is not from God, but from man's own inner lust. Any attempt at self-excuse is based on ignorance, both of God and of the nature of temptation. And so I'm thinking, I'm looking at this, and I read it a couple of times, and I realized, okay, so there's two types of temps, temp, temptations. Or tempted is has two different meanings. The first meaning is not a negative one it is a god meaning it's a positive one it's uh to test try or prove um talking about to prove the quality of one's character see our character matters our character matters um so that first one tempt is to test try or prove that's what god did with abraham he was uh, testing out the quality of his character. The second, and that, and let me read, as a matter of fact, let me read verse 2 and verse 12 so you can see that definition. So in verse 2 of James chapter 1, verse 2 says, and it's verse 2 and verse 3, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, of many kinds, because you know that the testing, which is tempting, the testing or temperature, tempting, like we, we would um, turn our temperatures up for the heat, for the house. You adjust your temperature when you're cooking something, when you're baking something, um, when you're preparing something, a temperature adjustment is done in the preparation. So it says, again, consider it, this is James chapter 1, verse two through four i'm gonna do two through four it says consider it pure joy my brothers whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know the testing of your faith develops perseverance that right there it was like in my face right there immediately i understood see remember all of this started with or i, I talked a lot about um second peter chapter 1 verse 5 through 11 where uh having been told that i needed to grow to maturity i was now being taught that to my faith i needed to add goodness to my goodness i needed to add um knowledge to my knowledge i needed to add self-control to my self-control i needed to add perseverance to my perseverance 
Godliness is added to my godliness. Brotherly kindness is added to the brotherly kindness. Love is added. So here he's saying, consider it pure joy. No, lucky go. Consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds. There's different types of trials, different types. But whatever the trial is, he says, consider it pure joy because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance. Now he's telling us, he's giving us a clue. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not acting um, not lacking in anything. Again, I had asked God uh, last year, the last couple of days of last year, coming into this new year, Lord, what should my uh, New Year's resolution be? What should it? What is it that I should be working on in this new year? God spoke to me and said, Hebrews six one. Let us press on to maturity. He told me to grow up. He said, not laying again foundations, and then he listed several things. Um, so so he told me to grow to maturity. Next thing I know, I end up seeing this scripture in about grunting. Now I got strong faith, right? I, I have a strong faith. I love the Lord and I have a strong faith and I stand on the word of God. I have a strong faith. So I've come across the scripture now in Second Peter where he now says to me, okay, you have faith. So do this to your faith Add goodness to your goodness. Add knowledge to your knowledge, add self control to your self control, add perseverance to your perseverance, add godliness to your godliness, add brotherly kindness to your brotherly kindness, add love. And, and there's another video that I did that goes more into detail about that. You don't want to miss that, but I did want to detail about that. So now here in James, he's telling me now, remember the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So he said, count it pure joy, pure, not tainted, not watered down, but pure joy. Whenever you face trials of many kinds. He didn't even try to define it. He didn't say when you face this type of trial or when you face that type of trial. He said when you face trial of many kinds, there are different types of trials. And he said when you face these trials, count it pure joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. He's telling us to have this joy when you're going through. Be joyful in the Lord. Be 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 uh overflowing, bubbly. Be joyful in the Lord because that's your strength. He said, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish. It didn't say that it might finish your work, its work. It didn't say that um, it should. It said it must. It must finish its work. It must. Perseverance must finish its work. So that you may be complete. So that you may be mature. Complete. Not lacking in anything. As I was reading that. The first thing that I thought of. Because. The testing of my faith. Is what develops perseverance. Right? So the first thing I heard the Holy Spirit say to me. Was to build yourself up. On your most holy faith. That's what the Holy Spirit said to me. So I got to show you this. I got to show you this. I got to show you this. And I'm excited to show you this. It's Jude. Now Jude is like one page. It's one chapter. It is the book before Revelation. But I got to show you this. And I'm excited to show you this. Um, Jude chapter 1. Starting at verse 17, listen to what it says. It says, but dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last times, there would be scoffers who would follow their own ungodly desires. Look, 
we were just looking at that, okay? We looked at that with Paul speaking of that to Timothy. And then we looked at that with um, Peter, where Peter spoke of that. Second uh, Peter chapter 3, verse 3. Well, well, with Timothy, Paul has said to Timothy that in the last days, it will be terrible times, terrible times. And then Peter said that scoffers, scoffers uh, in the last days will come scoffing and following their evil desires. Jude, now I get sent to Jude. You ain't, this ain't nobody but the Holy Spirit. I get sent to Jude. He says, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. Remember what Paul said. And remember what Peter said. They said to you. In the last times. There will be scoffers. Who will follow their own. Ungodly desires. These are men. Who divide you. Now he's talking even more about the scoffers. Now he's giving us even more detail. About the scoffers. He said, these are the men who divide you. Did you know? He wasn't talking about the one who was being scoffed against. So if anybody wants to sit and talk about the president that is now gone, mm, 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 he wasn't the scoffer. See, a scoffer is a person who laughs and speaks about another person or an idea in such a way to show that they think that this other person or idea is stupid or silly. So um, he said, these scoffers are the men who divide you. He said they are the men who divide. He's talking about the scoffers. It says these are the men who divide you. This is Jude chapter 1 verse 19. Who follow mere natural instincts. And catch this out. Christian. Catch this out. It says and do not have the spirit. This is God's word. I am reading from the book of Jude chapter 1. I'm reading. I'm going to read that again because it needs to be heard. But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the men who will divide you. Who follow mere natural instincts or who follow the flesh, mere natural instincts, and do not have the spirit. God's word said it, not me. But you, dear friends, so now he's telling us what to do about that. That we done seen, we done seen this all around us. We done seen this all around us. It says, but you, dear friends, build yourselves up. In your most holy faith. And pray in the Holy Spirit. That means. Okay, so a lot of people think praying in the Holy Spirit means that they go around and they blah, 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 you know, however they do it, you know, however they do their tongue. But praying in the Holy Spirit is when you ask God's Spirit to help you. Help you. You add, it's not you doing it. It's not you doing this tongue. You are asking God's spirit to help you. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27 says, The spirit will help us with our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for. That's our weakness. Now remember, you have your strength. You have your weakness, we have our counsel, and we have God's promise. That's the true analysis, not that SWAT stuff that, that this world tries to teach us. The true analysis that comes from Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. The true analysis is our strengths, our weaknesses, his counsel to us, and his promises to us. So we have the help of the Holy Spirit. This is Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27. 
We have the help of the Holy Spirit with our weakness. He will help us with our weakness. We do not know. This is what our weakness is. We do not know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit. Because the spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. He says, but you, dear friends, build yourself up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. In other words, you ask, you get before the Holy Spirit and you ask the Holy Spirit, help me to pray. Help me to pray because you're praying in accordance with God's will. So help me, help my mouth to match up what you're saying. Help me to pray. Keep yourselves. This is the other thing. It says keep yourselves in God's love as you wait. Keep yourself. Now remember to our... um. Faith, we're to add goodness. To our goodness, we're to add knowledge. To our knowledge, we're to add self-control. To our self-control, we're to add perseverance, which is necessary because perseverance we learned in the book of James. Well, let me go back to that. Perseverance in the book of James. Uh, what it says? I must finish away so that it, we may be touring. Okay, so it says... Uh, count it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. That's what I'm trying to say. The testing of our faith develops perseverance. The perseverance must have its work, must uh, finish its work. The perseverance must finish its work so that we may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. In other words, to our perseverance, we add godliness. We become mature. That's godliness. We become mature, not lacking anything. Uh, it says, so keep yourself in God's love. To the godliness, um, we add to that brotherly kindness. And to the brotherly kindness, we add love. Jude chapter 1 verse 21 says, Keep yourself in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Now, this is our brotherly kindness, how we deal with others. Be merciful to those who doubt, snatching others from the fire and save them. To others, show mercy. So each one is going to need something different, but he's telling us to be merciful towards them. So to those who need to, who, who are in the fire already, those who are going through a trial already, we need to snatch them from the fire and save them. And to those who are um, uh, struggling or however, it says to others, show mercy mixed with fear. Hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. So, so to Christians who are going through, snap, that's me saying that. that this didn't say it. It just said to others. So I'm, I'm going to say it the way this said, and I'm not going to add anything to it. Jude chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. Be merciful to those who doubt. Snatch others from the fire and save them to others. Show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. Not a benediction to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. That's such a great way to end this. I really, 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 really hope that I was clear in sharing all these different verses and showing you how they all relate or correlate, showing you the, so that you can apply this i really hope that you get and understand that the holy spirit who is telling us stuff beforehand he's telling us stuff so that we can 
do what we need to do to apply. See, remember, where the world tells you to swat, they tell you the strength, the weakness, the opportunity, and the threat. See, they, they have us, they, they tell us the strength, they tell us the weakness, they tell us that there's an opportunity, but then they take us back to looking at the threat. When instead of taking us, letting us keep going forward to look at the promise next, which is what Jesus would give us. He gives us the promise so that we keep going forward. The, the world would tell us, OK, I gave you the opportunity, but I need you to look back at the threat. Mm -mm. That's not that's not what God wants for us. That's not what Jesus has for us. He gives us the strength, our strengths. He tells us our weaknesses and then he tells us counsel. Counsel, which gives us the opportunity to get ourselves together, to get ourselves in alignment, to find the areas that we are weak in. We know our strengths, but the areas where we are weak in, we now have the opportunity to fix and work on that area that we're weak in so that we can move forward to the promise. We don't want to look at the opportunity after finding out our strength and weakness. We don't want to look at the opportunity and then turn around and focus on the threat. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that because then you're focusing on the threat. Ooh, ooh, Holy Spirit did it again. Oh my gosh, you are wearing me out with this. <laughs> He's wearing me out with this. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me show you this. The Israelites, when they were in the wilderness all them 40 years and, and they, they, they had to keep going around that mountain for 40 years now until everybody who had... Uh, initially went to go see the opportunity. They focused on uh, they focused on the threat, and so because they focused on the threat, it weakened their faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Well, because they focused on the threat, the threat weakened their faith. And so they began to doubt. And because they doubted, God said, okay, I got news for y'all. Ain't never one of y'all going in. Y'all children would go in, but you not going in. Except for, uh, except for Joshua and Caleb. Them two had faith, so they could go in. Now, I held tight to that because my granddaddy's name was Caleb, and he had a twin brother, and his twin brother's name, ironically, was Joshua. So every time I read that, I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I'm not letting go of my faith. I am not letting go of my faith. But before I, because the Holy Spirit got me earlier too, so I know that before I get all comfortable in my faith, I need to remember Peter, who said, I never deny you, Lord. I even die with you, Lord. And Jesus said, let me tell you something, Peter. Before this cop crows two times, you're going to deny me three times. <laughs> and it happened. So before I get all comfortable in the faith that I think I have, and I was reminded all that, Jesus now says to the Holy Spirit to tell me, tell me that I need to pray I'm going to get this back. This is Luke chapter 22. Now, y'all got to catch this because Jesus is telling us. He said, I need you to pray that you do not fall into temptation. He said, uh, and then he showed me how to pray. He said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. And then even in considering this, see, I never did get a chance to go look at what John said about what happened with Peter in that situation. I'm going to go look at it later. I'm not going to come back and do a video on that. This is the video. This is, it is what it is right here. This one video. So I'm not going to come back. We're ending it right here. But uh, I do encourage you to go look and see what John uh, said about that incident that happened. But with Luke, I stopped with Luke because at that moment, Jesus is not telling me what to do. He said, I need you to start praying. And then when Jesus went to go pray and then he came back and he found them sleep, he said, why are you sleeping? <laughs> I had to look at my dog because my dog, oh, my dog is getting this word too, though. And he down there sleeping. Why are you sleeping? Okay, he sits up. <laughs> But Jesus says, why are you sleeping? He says, get up, pray that you do not enter into temptation. And so I'm hearing that loud and clear. And in hearing that loud and clear, that took me to Jude, where Jude now says, 
to build yourself up. Well, actually, um, it was in my preparing to pray that I didn't enter into temptation, that I was taken to, what was it? It was James. One of those scriptures was James. Uh, one of those scriptures, I think, was James chapter 1, verse 13. Was it cha James chapter 1, verse 13? I think it was. James chapter 1, verse 13. I'm sorry, y'all. For two, I'm holding this camera. Yeah, about the temptation and that there was two different types of temptation and how uh, one of the tempting or trust was a testing or a trying or approving to show the quality of the character. So our character matters, you guys. Our character matters. And the other temptation was a temptation in the sense that so I wanted to make sure that... Um, I pray that God do not lead me into temptation. Do not let me um, fall to sin. Do not let me fall out. But even as I experience any or many type of trials, I need to count it joy because those trials, those trials are important because they develop the testing of my faith develops perseverance. In other words, as my faith is tested or tried, what it does is it makes me stronger and stronger and stronger in the Lord. And that strength allows me to stand. That strength allows me to stand. And so James, I mean, Jude, the brother of Jesus, Jude now tells us to build ourselves up on our most holy faith. So what's happening is in the council, Jesus is telling us what it is that we need to do so that we can be strong and so that we can endure. He's telling us so that we can endure. He says, but you dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit, pray in the Holy Spirit. We need to make sure that the Holy Spirit is helping us to pray that we're in alignment with the Holy Spirit and that he's helping us because the Holy Spirit prays according to God's will. We don't want to be around here going, you know, babbling with a tongue, talking about we praying in the spirit and we speaking in tongues and we still, um, um, we're still talking or praying our will and what we want. We need to be aligning ourselves with God's will. Y'all better catch this. Y'all better catch this. It says, keep yourself in God's love as you wait for the mercy. And here's the promise. Wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. He's telling us what to do. Snatch others from the fire and save them to others. Show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. To him who is able. Yeah, I got to say that again. And I'm actually going to end on this note. I'm ending right here. To him who is able to keep you from falling. Who is able to keep you and me from falling. And to present both of us before his glorious presence, check this out, without fault, complete in every way, with great joy, pure joy, great joy, with the fullness of joy, <laughs> with great joy, to the one, to the only God, our Savior, be, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm going to say that again. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. I am emptied out. Finally. I am emptied out. This is Sunday, January 24th, 2021. This has been a great takeover. God has taken over 2021 and I'm so excited about it. And I'm glad that I had the opportunity to share all of this with you. I hope it blessed you. Feel free to reach out to me. Feel free if you have any questions, if you need any prayer, uh, encouragement in the area of prayer, if, uh, whatever, look, Encourage me. <laughs> Let me know how what you think about these videos. I'd appreciate it. All right, y'all.